Meanwhile, breaking news this morning, the Prime Minister said he was going to do something and he is going to do something today. Boris Johnson says he'll host discussions with football governing bodies and fans as anger mounts over those proposals for six Premier League clubs to join a new European Super League. Well, joining us now, financial columnist for the Daily Telegraph, Matthew Lynn, and former England manager Sven Joran Eriksson. Well, good to see you both. Matthew Lynn, it is hard to find anybody who is going to defend this new move. Can you? I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly put myself in, you know, in, in the box of defending it or, or not defending it. Um, you know, the one thing, the point that I would, I would make is, you know, look, at the end of the day, these are private companies with shareholders and owners. And, and the system that we have in this country is that, you know, if you own a company, if you have shares in a company, you have an arrangement with your customers. And, and you know, there's a lot of customers. Obviously, it hasn't gone down very well, has it? It's going to go down in history as probably the most catastrophic product launch in, in all history. But, you know, We'll see how it plays out. If the customers want to do it, uh, if, the, if the clubs want to do it, if customers like it, if the streaming audience around the world likes it, then I don't see any intrinsic problem with it. As your as your little clip just at the beginning showed, you know, football's changed and evolved a lot in the last 120 years, and this may be another evolution, but we'll see. You know, the point I would make is that it's not really the business of government, Boris Johnson or Ursula von der Leyen in Brussels or other politicians around the world, to tell clubs how to arrange their affairs. It's up to them and their fans and their customers and their shareholders. Well, that's a, a very good point, Sven Joran Eriksson. The point is, none of the fans, none of the fans, even of those clubs which are breaking away, who would see them playing this sort of eternal glory game where they would never be relegated, none of those fans seem to be backing this. I understand that. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, and I agree totally, because... Uh, why should you change uh, something so radical in the world's biggest sport? Should we learn from America or what, whatever? What to learn from them? We are the biggest. We, football, is the biggest sport in the world and been like that for 100, 150 years. Mm. And I mean, to play a Champions League without competition, you, you have to compete to play uh, the final stage in 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 Champions League, and if that you take away that, uh, you take away a lot from football. But Sven, was this on the cards for some time? Though you've been involved in English football for years to come, you'll know how we've seen over the last 10, 15, 20 years foreign investment slowly coming in to the Premier League. We've benefited from it. We've seen great players. We've seen managers like you come to England, attracted by what is going on in in, in these shores. But we have to accept that these are businessmen and in the end they want to return on their investment, they want to secure their future. Was this on the cards for some time and should we have seen the signs coming? Well, it's nothing new because if you remember many, many years ago it was talking about uh, creating a, a Super League and at that time a Swedish uh, uh, president of the UEFA, Lennart Johansson, he saved the European football, according to my opinion, because he created the new Champions League before Champions League or the Europa Cup, it was called, had only one team from every country in Europe. But Lennart Johansson and his uh, people in the UEFA, they started that England and, uh, and Spain and Italy and so on can have four teams in uh, Champions League, the new Champions League. And that changed a lot. But now we are there again. But instead of creating a new uh, league, Super League, go to the table, sit down and talk about how to make the previous, the, 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 the Champions League of today better. Mm. Uh, that, that's the way to do it. Matthew, is this, I mean, you call it a catastrophic product launch. They couldn't have got it more wrong, really. But is it actually a negotiating tactic? Because UEFA do, do have these plans to shake up uh, the Champions League. So is this actually those six clubs saying, we're not happy with those plans, we're going to put our own plans forward, and then they come up with a better system out of both of those proposals? 
Uh, well, yeah, absolutely, it might be. I mean, well, that, well, I guess we'll see in the, in the next few days as, as this kind of whole story plays up out and they may come up with, with a solution. I mean, just, just to kind of, you know, run with that point a little bit. I mean, I think a lot of the fans are getting, you know, very, a lot of the politicians are, are wading in here, but probably the big loser from this, and, and you know, Sven would know more about this than I would, is, is UEFA and, and possibly in turn FIFA because, you know, a lot of the kind of rights and, and, and the financial financial uh, backing of, of it will transfer from them to the clubs. I'm not sure, you know, people have a, people have a huge affection for Manchester United or Liverpool or Spurs or, or, or Real Madrid, whoever it is. I'm not sure they have a huge, you know, feeling for UEFA or FIFA or, or for, you know, the kind of no. the, the, the governing no, I'm body. Sure, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure you're right. This is actually a, a kind of internal, an internal argument with, within football. And I don't, I really don't see the need for Boris Johnson and, and ministers and governments around the world to particularly get involved in in it. Well, I think politically, it's probably a quite a, a good goal for, no, for Johnson to try I, to I score. Agree that, I but thought. Not, not everything that's popular is the right thing to do. Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, Sven, I mean, where do you see this going? I mean, uh, do you think there will be some sort of a middle ground that we're going to see that's, that somehow that they, they, the, the clubs will get something, but perhaps not the entire Super League that they're thinking of? Will they get better negotiations, like you said, from the current Champions League? I mean, there, there has to be some way out of this, and at the moment, you just can't see it. Well, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can see that something will, will happen and something will be changed. But that six, 12 teams in Europe, or 20 teams you're talking about, would create their own league. I can't see that. I can absolutely not see it. And I strongly say, no, don't do it. Because that will take away the dream of football. Gothenburg, a Swedish team, 30 years ago, they played semi-final against Barcelona and they beat it Barcelona in Gothenburg. People still talking about that game 30 years after it because that was the highlight of, of, of yeah, Swedish football. Exactly you beat right. Barcelona. I mean, that's, that is don't the take, romance. Don't take away that dream. That is the romance of club football, mm. isn't it? That it eventually take... you could be the best in Europe. Yeah, don't take away that dream for everyone who loves football. Yeah. Sven, can I ask you, as a, as a foreign manager, and you were at the very top of the tree, you managed England, what is it like being a foreigner in English football? And I know, you know, football, we'll talk about French football, it's very, it means a lot to the French and Spanish football, and Swedish football means a lot to it, but English football, it's community, it's grassroots. Were you ever sensitive about decisions that you made or how you represented English football? Or did you, did you put the fans first? Or were you aware of that? So we're trying to get uh, my head around these American owners who seem to be completely ignoring anything the fans are saying to them. They don't even come, come to the media. They will never be on this show. They'll, they'll never do interviews. They don't address their fans. How did you approach that as a, as, as a foreign manager well, dealing in the English game? I didn't come to England to change English football. I didn't come there to make England uh, Sweden. <laughs> I, uh, I tried to adapt to what England is and what England can do. Then I tried to make the team as, as good as possible. So that, that's completely different. But I always felt at home in England. I uh, felt that the people, yeah, I, I suppose, I hope that most of them liked me. Uh, and I mean, if you're coming to any country and trying to change something which worked very well for 100 years, uh, you, you will not be popular everywhere. That's for sure. Yeah, we can and see Sven, that now. before we let you go, what kind of a headache is this going to be for an England manager if mm. players in these clubs are banned from playing, uh, from representing their country playing internationally? Well, it will co be a completely different competition, the Euro or the World Cup. And I mean, it's not only England. Look at Italy. Italy, uh, Juventus, Milan, Inter. I, I guess that 90% of all the players coming from there. So it, it will be something uh, completely different. And we don't want that. You don't want two Champions League. You don't want two World Cups. You, do, you don't want two European uh, Championship. Football is great as it is. If the bigger clubs want some more money, go to the table, sit and talk to UEFA and FIFA. Okay. Mm. All right, Sven, you're on Ericsson. Good to talk to you this morning. Matthew Lynn as well. Thank you very much indeed.